Thanks for tuning in to the World XP Podcast. If you're enjoying the content, please drop us up, drop a like, and let us know your thoughts below in the comments. Also, please consider supporting our podcast via the link below. It really helps us out. Jared, welcome to the World XP Podcast. Uh, I know we've been kind of, the first time I met you, like six months ago. No, it wasn't six months ago. I was like, hey, you want to come on? And then uh, things got busy. We're both busy people. And uh, But I'm very happy to have you because I know we were talking on one of our away trips and part of your story was very interesting to me, aside from the fact that you've just been involved in the team um, and I wanted to get to know more about you. I figured this was a good platform to do so, but welcome, man. How are you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to jump into this. Yeah, for sure. So for those who don't know who Jared is, Jared is a professional photographer. Uh, He partnered with Virginia Dream, I don't know exactly when you start, sometime late last summer, we'll call it we'll call it September. Yeah. Um, I say, yeah. I want to say like DM conversations started maybe like end of August and then like, yeah, just kind of snowballed after that. Yeah, for sure. So to give context of um, me seeing you being involved, I've known Lucas for a few years at this point and how I was talking to Lucas about his team was the the WPL needed some extra teams. And so I was trying to get Fredericksburg fire to put a team in, and they were talking with Lucas and maybe they were going to do a partnership or something But then that kind of fell through. And then he announced Virginia dream. And then very quickly afterwards, uh, I saw your name pop up and I went to your profile and I saw Alex Ovechkin and I was like, how the hell did he get this guy to come? It was very confusing um, because it came for, for me who had been talking to him came out of nowhere. And so he told me, he was like, yeah, we found this guy, Jared, who wanted to do a project with a new with a new team. And I was like, Oh, that's interesting. So how did it happen for you? Did you reach out to him? Did he reach out to you? How did that, how did that start? So, um, so earlier that summer I had been, um, doing some photography for Christos, mm-hmm. uh, for the USL two team. And I, you know, kind of got friendly with a couple of the players, um, Rashawn, um, of course. Who, yeah. Uh, because his major was photography in college. And so he and I, like, every time I'd see him in the dressing room, we talk, kind of talk photo. And, you know, he was always the first to be like, hey, you got a link from, you know, the match. I want to see, like, what you what you got. Um, so I didn't realize Rashawn was playing for Dream and WPL. Um, I kept seeing Rashawn repost Virginia Dream, um, like, match day posters, on Instagram. And I was just like, what is this? Like, I hadn't seen, um, a club in the area, uh, you know, utilize art in that way or, um, advertise or promote, uh, you know, their matches like by like kind of like an original illustration. So I was like, got really curious. Let me, let me try. That's FedEx. Sorry about this. You're good. You're good. And we're back. Jared has some FedEx that you got. They come at the most inconvenient times, I swear. <laughs> so um, anyway, yeah. so Rashawn and match day posters and art and stuff. Yeah. So Rashawn kept reposting uh, these like flyers and I got really curious and you know, spent some time on like uh, the Virginia Dream Instagram. And like, I was like, there's a very... Um, there's a vision there. It's something that's considered like, I don't know much about like the level of like soccer, but there's obviously something here with like what the club is trying to do from like a brand perspective. And I had been noticing like this bridge between fashion and soccer the past few years. And, you know, with my work in photography, I had felt a pull to like, do something with soccer since soccer was like a large part of like growing up for me. And I just like, I'm pretty sure I sent the club a DM and I didn't, I didn't know like, you know, who was monitoring it or who I was talking to. I was just like, you know, introduced myself and, uh, you know, was like, Hey, uh, you know, this is who I am. This is what I do. Um, I'm interested in like starting a conversation about it, like how we could, we collaborate on something. And then, it was me, Lucas, and uh, Keith. We yeah. met at a, a Northside Social um, in Arlington. 
uh because for some reason i like assumed that like everybody was coming from like virginia and like i live in dc later i would find that lucas lives in dc and we're like five minutes away from each other so the fact that we had to drive like 25 minutes 30 minutes like in traffic to meet each other is kind of funny yeah um yeah had um had coffee like i ran them through like some ideas and like what i wanted to do what was possible and like um i was also thinking about like what was possible with like a merch program and like just doing things like beyond photography but like having strong visuals but using those visuals to like raise awareness for the club like raise awareness for so like how do you make soccer interesting to somebody who doesn't care about it like i remember that being like a big um chunk that we spent on during that conversation and like talked about music talked about art like um he it was a thing where like i understood it from like the get-go and it was like a conversation that i hadn't had before and it was like very 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 refreshing yeah that so was that, something I would that, say that was this that was the start that was something that Lucas mentioned that from the beginning it was very organic and everybody seemed to be on the same page. And from knowing him, he, not that he doesn't trust people that, well, I guess that's true. He doesn't really trust new people for a variety of reasons that we don't need to get into. And so I asked him um, on our episode, I said, how difficult was it for you to relinquish some level of control? I guess your baby. How are you going to relinquish some level of control to some guy that you just met? And I hadn't seen this part of him before where he was like, no, we were on the same page. It was good. And that, that was surprising to me. Did you get any feeling from, or how did that meeting go from the standpoint of you have no idea who these two are, or you might've Googled them or looked them up on Instagram and, but you hadn't, you didn't know them. You didn't know who, who they are as individuals. You didn't know them how did that go? So you walk in and what is your, where's your mindset at? Are you just kind of like, if this works great, if not, oh, well, and I'll move on with my, with, with what I'm doing or how, or was it something that you were more like, I really want this to happen. Was there more riding on it than just a, Hey, this is a cool idea. So, so after I had finished up um, the summer, um, working with like Christos, I, I was like taking steps to like create kind of this uh, like fictitious club. And I was going to like design uniforms. I was going to design, um, well, actually I did design uniforms. I designed a scarf. Like I wanted to create, um, this story of like a club that's in the area. And then I was going to cast, um, models or soccer players that had like good personal style basically like the the prereq was going to be like can you juggle the ball and not look awkward and then i was going to like create make this like um so not like andreas <laughs> <laughs> um make this like you know kind of like editorial like you know tell a story through like images um about this like fictitious club and that's about when the conversation started with like Lucas. And I was like, I didn't have any expectations. I was kind of like, okay, if this, if this works, um, if this becomes something that's beyond just me doing game or doing match photos, that's like awesome. Um, I just want it to be something that I haven't done before. Um, if it happens, if it doesn't happen, um, you know, that's cool too. I at least tried. Yeah. But this is a, this is more of a personal project for you as, as mentioned before, some of the people that you've shot have been way more high, high, high end, high scale, famous, whatever word you want to use than what we're doing. So this, when that was one of the reasons, especially why I was so curious is because I went, when I went to look at your profile, or why it was confusing. I was like, why, why would he come down to, I, I say down in the most respectful way possible, but for you not knowing what we're doing to come down to and just an amateur team 
how like there's some and we we spoke about this before there's obviously some level of passion there but you could go be shooting someone who plays for DC United maybe if you want or like you could be doing all these things what what was the so obviously we we had the fashion and the and the story and the music draw but what about you personally made it without rehashing that i guess i guess what i'm trying to get at is where before so the fictitious club idea happens but that was that that wasn't meant to be a long term project right it was going to be a portfolio type thing so how did you go from that to i'm going to spend all of this time traveling to greenville with this with this semi pro team and doing all of these things and setting up media days and how did it turn from a portfolio type project to where it is now in your head or did you ever envision it getting to where it is now oh i definitely did not envision like i didn't envision like dying kits on like my yeah. kitchen stove. I didn't envision like um casting models through Instagram. Like none of this um was something that I had expected or planned for. It just kind of it just kind of happened. Like I I was interested in like dying and like customizing like shirts. And, and then I think I showed I showed one to Keith, I think. And Keith was like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. And then like showed it to Lucas. And then I think I was like, oh, I have like, I have a small and a medium. Like I have no use for this. Like, why don't you guys just like try these out? And I think they maybe wore them to like fire training or something. And then, yeah. um, then we were like, Lucas and I were kind of just like going back and forth. Like, oh, maybe this is like a pre-match like for, you know, NPSL or, you know, whatever league uh, the club's going to play in in the spring. So we went at it from that idea. And then like, it just kind of snowballed to like, okay, we're hand dyeing all the kits and then like figuring that out with the screen printer. So it's been, um, a lot of this has been like, we have an idea, like one of us will get an idea and then it's like, okay, cool. How do we do that? Or, you know, what's missing this. And then like, we just kind of like, you know, kind of like steady, keep building. But to to go back to your original, why why am I here? Why am I like kind of like so um, present with like mm -hmm. kind of the day to day and like you know being in the dressing room? Um, there. So my work is about like community identity, and I feel like sports is like a good way to talk about other things and to talk about life. Um, so a lot of those photos that I'm making in the dressing room and I'm making um, on the sidelines when I'm making, you know, during warmups, you know, those are like my favorite times to photograph because like, it's about the relationships. It's about like um, this very special um, time in your life um, in Lucas's life, in Keith's life, Andreas's life, Brandon's life, Kofi's life, um, Diara's, Sam's, like, you're only going to have this for like a short amount of time and then it's going to be gone. And being able to like crystallize that time in like in image and have that kind of like live forever, like, we're not going to remember like the result in Greenville, but you're going to remember, you know, the time that you popped that blister in like the dressing room. And then like <laughs> seeing it in like the group chat where you're just like, ah, come on, man. Like, this is, like, <laughs> this is the only photo of me. Like that's the one you picked. <laughs> that's it. But like another aspect of like um photography that like, uh you know is my favorite is like i get to take somebody to a place where they wouldn't be able to go so to answer the other question of like why why a semi-pro team like why a fourth division team it's like i can be in the dressing room i can move around i can do all of these things and like access isn't an issue and also like i can talk to you like i can go talk to anybody on the team like I don't have to like jump over like red tape I don't have to talk to an agent I don't have to talk to like a player representative and like 
explain like, okay, well, what is the image that I want to make? What's the purpose of it? Um, mm. I think my presence now, everybody probably has a good idea in terms of like why I'm there um, and like what the photos are going to look, look like. Um, and I, I also feel like I've like kind of like become part of the background too. Like I'm, I'm old news, like people probably don't think much, like if I'm like photographing something in the dressing room, they're probably just like, oh, he, he's making yeah. art right now. Don't talk to him. <laughs> I'll, I'll dap him up. Like when the camera is not in front of his face. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting to talk about capturing moments. I think my, one of my favorite thing, the first game that I played in um, was against Alexandria United and the third goal we scored, Lucas runs over to you and there's a picture of uh, five of us, me, Terrell, Jakob, Lucas, and I don't remember who the fifth one was, but that to me, that picture, I sent it to, I sent it to my wife after the game or after you posted the picture. And I was like, this is why like this shows everything. Like I haven't with fire. Every time we scored, it was almost a relief. There was a lot of like, we're supposed to be winning these games and the game is closer than it needs to be because of it's indoor and all the various things. But the, that picture captured, it was like the first time in a, in a while that I had been genuinely happy scoring and the fact that you got it i was like on my on my first game with them as well it was like crazy um so yeah no i get it for sure after that set of pictures i was like wow he's really good at capturing the, like these sorts of things because there's been other photographers that have been very good um like warner for instance has his black and white style like during the game and those have a different aesthetic and i didn't really know i'm not super art i'm not I'm not super artsy. So I was like, oh, it's pictures for the longest time. Um, and then talking to Rich um, and what he's kind of done with his media day pictures with the spraying cans and the lights in the back. And then when he, I don't know exactly what he does in editing, but those look cool. And he has his own style. And then you've got your style during games with the lights kind of, um, I don't know what the, I don't know how to describe it. Go look at his pictures. You'll know what I'm saying. And then Warner's, yeah. got, his, Warner's got his black and white stuff and, I was like, ah, this is really cool because then Andreas has his own, what he does as well. And to have all three of you guys taking pictures and then seeing all three sets of pictures from the same event come through and be totally different. That was when I was like, oh, wow, it's more than you always knew that's more than pictures, right? You have respect for the craft and knowing that just because I don't understand the craft doesn't mean that there's not more to it, obviously. Um, but it was cool to really see that in just slapped me in the face almost after that first game. So I, I, how did you develop your own, like that, that you wanted to grab those types of images versus the other one? How did you develop that? So, so, so my background is like, was photojournalism. Mm -hmm. I um, worked at a newspaper in Southwest Virginia called the Roanoke Times. And it was a lot of it was like covering, covering high school sports. And yeah, it was the, it was the thing where like, okay, like you can go to, you can go to a football game, you can go to a basketball game, soccer game, and like, just kind of photograph like what's being like presented to you. I have always been interested in like, okay, like, can we go can we go like deeper a little bit and that started with like okay like can I get in the locker room during a football game or a basketball game and like being able to like explain it to a coach and then trying to show or describe like how bad a team wants to win or like you know the emotion that like comes with like competition like win loss but then also like you know, camaraderie, like what it's like to be a part of a team, like what it's like to, um, you know, be next to like the person that is like trying to do the same thing that you're doing, like that kind of common goal. Um, so like my, I would make like little assignments for myself. Like I would, you know, yes, of course I need to like get the, whatever the big play is, but then also, I want to make an image that like 
speaks to the emotional quality of like the story of that game. Um, a long time ago, there was a like Virginia Tech football was like a big deal and they were playing Nebraska. And I remember it was a game where there was like a lot of back and forth and Virginia Tech <clears throat> ends up like winning on like, like a last minute drive and like, um, instead of like photographing the action, I like turned around and saw this like Nebraska fan who went from like, you know, pure just jubilation to like, you know, head in hands, like upset. And you see this like wave of like maroon and orange, you know, behind him just like going like crazy because of like this last minute win. And to me, like that emotional quality, um, says more than like somebody running with the ball the image of somebody running with the ball is important but like it's that emotion um for me that's why i like always like come back to come back to sports and like yeah it's like one shining moment for like march madness like that's like the best because like you see the highs you see the lows you see what it means to be a part of a team like it's just it's the best like two and a half minutes like i'm yeah. Always my favorite yeah sports has a way of doing that to people that nothing else really does um you use the word jubilation and the, the reason i'm i pointed i'm pointing this out is because so i i also enjoy stand-up comedy and comedians have a thing that they call economy of words and it's how many words they're using, exactly what word are they using to exactly describe what they're trying to get a, across to their audience. You being in the business of, we'll, we'll call it for, we'll say, emo capturing emotion, have you had to figure out kind of exactly what you're trying to capture in a way that was more specific than you ever thought it was before? right? Jubilation versus joy versus happiness are all like interchangeable, but also they mean slightly different things. Do you know what I'm asking? Kind of like, have you felt yourself kind of increase in your emotional um, EQ, for lack of a better word, and understanding exactly what that it's not like, like, it's not anger, and it's not sadness. It's somewhere in between. And when you capture that and then you see it, have you got, has that happened? Has that change occurred for you? Do you know what I'm trying to get at a little bit? So, uh, so a lot of the, a lot of the times when I'm like working, you know, making, making pictures, like I'm trying to be as like present as possible and like really, really pay attention to like what's happening. Um, you know, looking at body language, looking at um so for instance in like the dressing room like paying attention to like um player like rituals like I, I know that like people do you know put their socks on a certain way or like tie their shoes a certain way or um socks then shin guards everybody's got something different like a routine um so paying attention to just like very very small details and then trying to consider like okay like what is actually happening here and like try to like remove like my filter because like I have a filter I have a bias I have like a point of view so it's trying to like balance that out I think um sometimes like images can look a little bit more intense um, than they actually are. Um, and I, I, I'm always curious about that, but like, yeah, I'm, yeah, just being present and trying to understand what's actually happening. I don't know that if I have like an actual, like specific. It yeah. It wasn't really a question. It was just more something that I thought about as you were, as you were describing that, like, whether it's maybe knowing what to look for better or understanding even maybe like I can take a picture of this guy, but I have to make sure that he doesn't see me because he's super pissed off after X. What Like when you're going into the locker room and you remove your 
your own filter and you're like, what's actually happening here? Picking up on, has it, I guess, I guess a way to turn it into a question would be, has that translated to your life outside of photography and just how you notice things? But it, for me, is something that I am also interested in. And I guess I would say um, I am a little bit good at that. And so it's interesting to me to talk to other people who also notice these things because as I'm sure you notice, you like you'll be in a room with somebody, you like the term read the room. You're like, did you not see that guy's face? Why would you why would you do that? Like what like did you not see? And they're like, Oh, I didn't notice. It's like, <laughs> dude. So but I, I guess it's more just a conversational point, but to turn it into a question, have you have you has that help has that helped or and or translated for you into your life outside of photography and how do you kind of because sometimes I need to turn it off because if it's on all the time then I'm worrying about every every person's face or reaction or little thing here and there and that can also get exhausting yeah I, I have to also turn it off otherwise like yeah I'll be too too wrapped up in like oh, this person moved like three feet or like they looked a certain way or their head turned and like, oh, am I like taking up too much space in line like at the coffee shop? Like, um, yeah, I have to, yeah. I, I think being sensitive to that stuff is like, uh, comes with like a price. Like, I think it's good because I'm thinking about, you know, other other people but then also I tend to put myself last mm -hmm. and yeah, it's something that I'm working on. Something I'm trying to like balance out. Cause like, I don't know. It's like radical swings where I'm just like, okay, like what's everybody else doing? Like, is everybody okay? And then it's like, Oh wait, no, not, I'm not okay. Yeah. And then like, trying to like overcorrect and like, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to do a, be a, do a better job of just being like present and just kind of like in the moment instead yeah. of like, it's, it's an amazing positive though, in the locker room to notice that different people do different things. Um, because at that point, like for me, I'm locked in on what I'm doing, but if I was in your shoes, oh, well, I have, I have been in your shoes actually before when I, w when I was injured and I was just watching how people did stuff. And I was like, Oh, that's interesting that he does that. And that he does that. But it's, that turning it off part is so did it take you a while to learn to do that or before you realized that you needed to do that? Was it on autopilot at some point? Uh, I don't know if it's like fully off. Like I like, or, it's just you like... realized you realized now though, like, did it take, did it take a conscious, like I need to stop doing this right now when I'm just in line at a coffee shop and it doesn't matter. And then I yeah. go into the locker room. I need like, Talk me through that portion because that's super interesting to me to get into your head as you're noticing everyone else being in their own head, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. So like when I'm in like the dressing room now, um, I everybody, I would say everybody understands what my role is and like what I'm doing. So if I'm like six inches away from somebody with a camera, like they're like, yeah, it's just Jared. He's just doing his thing. He's not going to be here the whole time. Like, there's probably a very good reason why he's doing this. Um, having said that, um, if it seems like somebody is off or something is different, or maybe it's um, maybe it's a new guy on the team that like I haven't met before, I'm probably not going to be like six inches away from them, like. If it's like Keith and Sam and like Angel, you like, yeah, I'll get close. But like, um, you know, we've got a few new guys like Sosa, Sir John. I think it's going to take some time for them to kind of get used to like my presence and then also used to like, you know, what their rhythms are and like what they need to do to like get like, um, you know, mentally and physically prepared for the game. Because the other thing too is, I never want to be the reason why, you know, somebody's performance is off. Like, I don't want to, I don't want somebody to have to think about like why I'm there or like, what's he doing with the camera? I don't want people to pay attention to me and I don't want to do something that like distracts somebody, um, you know, from their routine while they're getting prepared.
Yeah, that makes sense. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit to some of the cool people that you've taken pictures of. And for me, the one that rings a bell is Alex Ovechkin. And the reason for that is my dad grew up in upstate New York, always playing hockey. My two little brothers, hockey players, been to a ton of Caps games. And obviously he's been on the Caps for, I don't know, when did he get drafted? Like 2001 or something crazy like that. He's been around for forever. So for me, that's the one that rings a bell. What was it like with him? Did you have a lot of interaction with him beforehand, before or after, or not really? Was it just in and outs? And what was he like? What was that? situation like had you been in a situation where somebody with that kind of star power was in the room before and if not how did you deal how they just walk me through the whole and also how did it come about just walk me through the whole the whole experience so the so the ovechkin um project that was that came through espn they were doing a um kind of like a lead up to him breaking breaking the record for like 800 Eight hundred goals. Eight hundred and two, I think it was. Yeah, he was going to surpass what Gordy Howe. Yeah, I, I was at I was at the game that he was at eight oh one. I got I got tickets, and then he didn't score, and I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, ESPN was like doing. Um, they wanted to like put together this like video component for it, and like, you know, of course with like motion, like you have to have like still photography. So this was like a pretty, pretty big crew. They had like um, a director, like a, a steady cam on skates and then like three or four other cameras. And um, there was like a lot of lighting um, to produce like more, more drama in like the practice um, rink. And so a lot of this was just kind of like set up and just waiting around um, for him to show up. Cause we had like a very, very, very like brief window with him. I want to say it was maybe 15 minutes. Mm. And then I think the 15 minutes turned into like less than 10 um, because like, you know, he's like professional athlete. Like he showed up early and I remember him being like, oh, you guys aren't ready to go. Like, I'm ready to go. Like, let's do this. And, you know, like, you know, people are kind of like rushing to get into position. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of like off to the side using a longer lens, like, you know, to make these images. And like, occasionally I get a little bit closer, but like, I'm trying to stay out of the the view of, you know, the other seven cameras plus a steady cam like on skates um yeah. so i didn't have too much interaction with him um there was a a director who was like providing instruction like hey can you you know can you do a slap shot can you like celebrate can you do this can you do that and like he would do this is the thing about like professional athletes it's like so incredible is that like you ask them to do this one specific thing and they do it and they do it perfectly and then this is also embarrassing from like, you know, being a professional photographer, you're kind of like, that was great. Can we do that again? <laughs> and it's kind of like, well, like, shouldn't I be like kind of on that level of like, you know, get it the first time. But yeah, it was a lot of, he would do something and they would ask him to do it again. And he was getting kind of frustrated. <laughs> So what's so what's that like if someone gets frustrated? Because I remember I was watching the Juventus All or Nothing documentary on Amazon. I don't know if you watched it or not, but they were uh, Ronaldo was on the team then, and they were doing like a Christmas shoot or whatever, and they were like, "All right, Ronaldo's going to be here in ten minutes. Everybody get ready. We have seven minutes with him or whatever." Like, and he's in and out, and they're like, "Oh, he's great." Blah blah blah. Take the pictures in and out. Knows how to pose for the camera. Obviously, it's Ronaldo, but they were talking about how stressful the the 20 minute lead up was to make sure that because they only had five or seven or whatever, whatever the number was. And they had to get all the shots that they needed because he was, he he was needed for some other commercial for Nike. And then he had to go do a watch thing. And then he had to go do a, what all the things that people that all the things that someone like Ronaldo does. Um, so when he's, what's that like then when he gets, when, when Ovechkin is like a bit, a bit frustrated because of whatever, whatever the reason is, is it are the stress levels rising of the director? Because I imagine you got people running around in the back, like, "Oh my god, he's getting frustrated!" Like, what do we do? So, how for you, 
being kind of, I don't want to say like accessory, but you watching this go down, what, where, what's going on in your head? So I think working with like any professional athlete or, you know, any person of note, like does pose some challenges because you are given like such a short time to like accomplish, uh, you know, what's needed. And you really only get like one shot to do it. Uh, yeah. A lot of, a lot of the work is just done like in the setup, in the prep, like trying to make sure like the concept for the lighting is good. And then like, once you get to the location, making sure the lighting is doing what it needs to do. And like, that's looking good. Like, yeah, it's kind of the same way that you would prepare for like a match. Like you're putting all this work on the back end, you know, in order to get to match day where like, once you get to match day, you don't have to think about it. Like, you know, you walk on the field and then like, you're kind of just ready to go. Um, that's at least how I think about it. It's like, okay, like got enough time to scout set up. Lighting is like dialed in. We just need like the talent here and here. And then we're going to move them through these three different setups. And, you know, if we get like a few more minutes and they're feeling it and it's, things are moving good. We can try this and then like, we can kind of push it a little bit more and see if like, you know, we can make something that's unexpected. But yeah, I have been in situations where the talent has not wanted to be there. And you, I think when I was um, a younger photographer, I was like, thought this was like something that I did, something that was like my problem. And that like, I had to be kind of accountable for somebody else's actions. And that like weighed quite a bit on me for the longest time. And then yeah, I went into therapy and then like figured out that like, okay, I can't control how other people react to things. Like people have like lives outside of this like particular photo shoot. So something could have happened that day that like kind of set them off. So like, it's not, it's not something I did. It's like part of something else. So I always like, I always like have that in the back of my mind that I can't control like what somebody else does like I can try to like make it better I can try to like um you know reassure them I can try to like I always feel like being a portrait photographer a lot of it is like how you relate to the person how do you make them comfortable how do you make them like feel empowered to like feel like they want like proud of like who they are because I feel like if someone's proud if someone like feels good that's going to come through in the image um if someone feels like terrible um they're it's not going to be good um but also sometimes maybe that's the point is to make an image that like is reflective of like the tone it's just kind of a balance but um for the for the Ovechkin project in particular um I think with him it, he's such like um a big superstar that like he I think in that situation he almost had a little bit too much control and I think he was kind of dictating um how the shoot would go and like when he was done and when he was ready to move on to the next thing um as opposed to being kind of like more of a collaboration Mm. Um, but also I kind of get it like if I had to do that many like press availability type things for this like record that like I'm sick of talking about like yeah maybe I'd be like cool let's wrap this up like I got like I need to get my shoulder worked on or like whatever like yeah, that makes sense, especially for the record, because I'd be when records like that pop up is that's all the whatever the media is talks about is it gets irritating after a while. I want to jump to or it's not really a jump, but so dealing with somebody like that and then to, to dealing with our group of 
uh, the peanut gallery on our own media day. What was that like for you? Because you got people that probably are better in, in front of the cameras than, than, than others. And to your point about making people feel comfortable, kind of, I didn't realize when I was standing there that I was supposed to move around. I thought I was just doing the first, like the first uh, kind of like straight on shot. And then it seemed like way too long. And Lucas was like, do whatever you want. And I was like, oh, <laughs> but what was, what was, so what's for you, is it more, because obviously you still have all the lighting and all the stuff that you would do anyways, maybe to a, a lesser scale. But when you're going for a whole team like that and you've got different personalities and different people and different levels of comfort and how how is that to work with? How is that to set up? How is that like once you're actually there and maybe somebody isn't as comfortable, how do you handle that? How did that go? Uh, okay, so... Well, I had like, I had some like really good help. Like I had my friend, Matt Dandy, who's mm -hmm. a phenomenal digital tech, um, set up the lighting. Um, and then like beforehand, like Lucas and I had like been mood boarding. Um, like, you know, we had to get like a plain white backdrop shot for NPSL and for some other things, but we also wanted to do something a bit more stylized. So we wanted to have that like concept going in and then also make it um fluid so like we could kind of flip from one setup to the other without the player having to like take a break or like um shift their focus from being photographed so we wanted it to be seamless and like matt and i had kind of game plan for that and so like once we got to the studio like everything was set up um we had the lighting dialed in we had tested like the setup of like going from like just straight up white backdrop to that spotlight effect um with like the blue the blue gel in the background and then like kind of moving that light to create different effects um but the interaction with like you know each player like i think because like i have I mean, I talk to everybody, or at least I try to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I have, like, pretty good – I don't think anybody hates me, like, on the club. I think, like, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in good standing with, like, everybody. If you hate Jared, put it in the comments, and then we'll know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think the fact that there was, like, kind of, like, a, a built-in rapport with everybody, it was, like, pretty – pretty easy to work with. And I think having that monitor um, where players could see images coming in and they're just like, oh, oh, wow. Okay, this is how I look. All right, like, let me try this. Or like, do we have time for this? And um, Lucas is very like kind of deliberate with like styling and um, how things need to look. So having him there to like provide some direction and I think all the players were kind of open to it. I think most of the players had some type of experience with this through like college or maybe even some professional, um, like a media day like that. So I think that was helpful. Um, yeah. I mean, I think like everybody, I don't think anybody like really, Actually, no, that's not true. I think it was like Andres. I don't know if um I don't want to pick on Andres, but I think Andres was like Andres kind of froze um once we got to him. But I think everybody else was like pretty pretty free flowing. I think Andres was like the only one that didn't know what to do. We had to give him the ball. Like once he got the ball, like started juggling and like doing some tricks, and it was like okay, this is like yeah, we're back at how, it. How did you pick? Because there's a few things like. Cause I have the one, the shot where the ball's like, I'm bouncing the ball off my shoulder and then some other players, like angels got one where he's doing around the world. And then some other, like, how did you get into, cause I was just juggling and I just popped it off my shoulder and you're like, Oh, that's cool. Do that again. Um, how did you get, was that just an, was that just an in the moment thing that, and cause I saw, I noticed a, a few different, a few different ones. So how did you pick that one? Was that something that you just kind of, like right there you're like oh that's that's a cool thing we'll just do that so part of it um part of it's in the moment and then paying attention to like what your body's doing mm -hmm. and like what your body looks like and then how you're looking 
Um, this is something that like Lucas and I talk about like quite a bit where like there could be a person who is the most technically proficient person, but they look robotic or they look awkward doing it. But you could have somebody who's maybe a little sloppy or they've got like a little bit more style or like their arms like kind of flow a certain way and like that speaks to like their personality so um whenever i'm in like like a portrait situation like that i'm paying attention to like okay what's somebody's face doing what's their body doing like where like does the hair frame their face a certain way if they turn their um head to the left versus the right like um does their eye do something like it's uh, all these like kind of like very like small details that I feel like really make like that separate like an average photograph from like a successful photograph so mm. um and then like there are certain I'm trying to remember if there's like somebody else in like media day oh yeah we had Brandon like mm -hmm. I had this like idea of like hey, look at the camera while you do this. And like, it just like wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, we had him, we we're just like, okay, don't look at the camera. Just like do it how you would normally do it. And it was beautiful. Like when he did it, like without looking at the camera. So sometimes it's like, I have to also throw my idea out because like it doesn't work with like how that person's body moves. Yeah. So a lot of it, it becomes this kind of like mini, like collaborate, not a mini, it becomes a collaboration between like photographer and person like in front of the camera. That makes sense. Yeah, that's how it was, when, obviously, when I, when I was there. Um, yeah, you, I mean, it was super comfortable after, after that first, like, oh, I'm supposed to be moving around mini realization. And then after that, it was very smooth. Lou, Lou gave me the ball and it was all good and just a couple couple of poses here and there um i know i asked you this on the bus on the way back from greenville and the reason i asked you this was um because i saw you had taken some absurd number of pictures and then when we get our when we get our link from you it's 60 70 80 whatever it is how for those listening how do you sort through and pick the pictures because um the other thing that you mentioned on the bus when we were looking at kevin's goal the, the header um that you just hold it down and it's almost like when you scroll through it, it's like a mini, a mini movie almost. So how do you pick of the mini movie that you do? How do you pick the ones and how, like, how do you decide which ones that you're going to go? And then, because then you, you edit some, or you, you edit them as well. Mm -hmm. So, so when you go through those, are you ever, Oh, I think this one would be good. And you start editing it and then you realize, Oh, the, the one, like the next one would actually be better with that edit or what's your process like for that? So, so I would say like for like, for game action, like I'm looking for like the, the peak moment. So I think with like Kevin's goal, like, I think I was late when I was like, when I held the shutter down, like I didn't get the like ball, like coming off, like flicking off of him. Like there's like some separation between him and the ball. Mm -hmm. So it you can't really you can't really tell what's going on like you you and I are gonna have a semblance of what's going on because like we were there but I think just like that photo without like caption information that says like you know scored in the like whatever minute um because it just looks like kind of awkward because he's bent over like yeah. walls behind him and like you know, the keeper's out of position, but like, you don't know. I think that's the limitation of the still photograph is that like, you don't know what's actually happen happening. It's like, it's fractured, it's fragmented. Um, but I'm looking for like the big, the big moment of that. So um, that could be like the moment that somebody kind of like crashes into like two players crash into each other for like a tackle or um i think the other thing you might notice with some of the game action is that like the players are off the ground um even when they're dribbling um when they're running that their feet aren't fully 
on the ground. And that's like something that I pay attention to. Um, just yeah, cause you like got, you got one of me like that, that I remember specifically. Yeah. And like, I also think of like, you know, how do we, how to describe motion, how to describe somebody that's fast. Like it's like difficult to like, you know, I'm freezing a moment, but like somebody like Demetrius, who's just blowing by people, like, how do I make a photograph that like shows the power shows the like speed? Like I, it's, I, I think about that quite a bit and like trying to find that like peak moment where he's like got somebody committed and he's going to go around him. Um, a lot of like the editing decisions are just by like feel and just by like taste mm-hmm. but then also how I'm feeling that day. Cause I've definitely done this before where like I'll revisit, like I'll revisit a shoot. Um, so I'll make, I'll leak a little bit of news here. So like we are, we're working on a book that's going to, that's going to chronicle the first year of the club. So I've been going back through, um, you know, matches, basically anytime I've had a camera and like looking at like, okay, what did I miss? And sometimes it's kind of embarrassing to be like, oh, why did I like pick this picture instead of like, you know, this other, this other moment? Um, Like, why was I responding to this moment instead of this other moment? So that's i don't know that's kind of the like push and pull of like photography and that like um a lot it's like all just very subjective yeah that's one of the things i i love talking with uh creatives about is kind of when they go off feel it's like what does that mean for that person because for every person is me like for every person it means something different like i can only talk to so many uh i don't know like video game designers because they have a certain like they're designing a video game there's a certain level of like okay we've done this and this and this or like physical therapists like the human body is super cool but you can't feel a better way to fix a knee like there's a way to fix a knee and or more than one but people know what i mean um so for you when you're like when you have that moment of oh why did i respond to this one and not this one or what do you how does that work in your head? Like, what, like, where are you feeling? Like, what, like, what are the sorts of things that go into the equation where you're like, I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to edit this one. And then when you go back, like what, what makes you say, Oh, I should have done that one instead of this one. Cause in that moment you picked the first one for a reason, you know what I mean? So like what, what goes into that equation in your head when you're going back to it? Cause it's not one that's objectively better than the other one. Like you said, it's subjective. So you can't really, I feel like, it, I, I feel like if it was me, I'd be beating myself up a lot for, for bad choices. And then realizing that it's not a, it's not one is not good or bad. It just is how did like, what goes into that for you? Yeah, that, um, that's exactly, that's exactly it. Like I used to beat myself up quite a bit, um, about like, especially if it was like, a the assignment was like a quick, quick turnaround, quick deadline. Like, you know, if I photograph something in the morning and then had to file um, in the afternoon and, you know, I would always like kind of second guess myself and be like, ah, did I, did I send the right, like, like the right image? Like, and then go, I would go back and like, look at it and be like, ah, I missed this and I missed this. And like, you know, sometimes like, you know, you can send those additional images. Other times it's, you can't just because of like limitations with time. Um, yeah, I just kind of like learned to just be like a bit more secure with like, okay, like in this moment, in this like situation, like this was the best like decision given like all of the circumstances that are kind of out of my control. Mm-hmm. I mean, like in a in a perfect world, like I would I'd probably photograph a match and then like not look at the photographs for two or three days and then come at it with like kind of like a clear mindset. Cause like there could be like a scenario, like you know, there's like something that happens in the dressing room that's hilarious, but like I think it's hilarious and like everybody in the photo thinks it's hilarious, but like 
maybe it doesn't translate because like I either didn't do like the moment justice or it's just like a moment that doesn't translate for 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 photo just because of the limitations of like what you can do with like a still image um but yeah it's like that's something that I think about quite a bit and like glad that we have this like book project coming up to where like maybe we can find a home for some of these images that like you know we haven't used on social or yeah I mean I guess like we've really only been using images on like Instagram Instagram and Twitter I guess yeah I'm sure you've got tons back in the and from all the matches and stuff that haven't been seen so it'll be I'm excited for that. That'll be cool to see when it comes out. Um, I want to touch on TST real quick and then kind of what's next for you. So TST, you're coming with us, right? Yeah. 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 So I'm super excited for that, just from a playing perspective. But for you, you're going to get so many interactions with athlete. I feel like it's going to be just a field day for you. You're just going to walk around athlete village and different things and explore and like when we're not playing you'll be you can be at the field or doing whatever it is you're doing and the interactions between us is going to be all day for four days like if we're eating together or any of these things so what like in your head what where what are you excited for what are you looking forward to what kind of um yeah just like what what's going through your head so this will this will also come out after we're back so maybe we can but like yeah just what's what's going on for you in your head for TST so i'm i i love a road trip i i feel like going out on the road going like traveling um just lends itself to photography really well and especially when you're traveling with like a large group like there are going to be there are going to be some like really fun moments that happen. I think going, going to and from, uh, you know, DC to North Carolina, like going from the hotel, you know, to wake med. I'm, those are the moments that I'm looking forward to are like kind of the, like things that are like probably, uh, on paper seem a bit boring. Like I'm looking forward to like the downtime in between like, uh matches um looking forward to like you know how how is lucas gonna wrangle everybody to get on the bus at the same time and like making sure everybody's dressed properly and like nobody's wearing um things that are deemed uh out of uniform um also excited like we are we're gonna have sideline gear um and travel gear for you guys so we're you know, excited to see how that's going to look, um, on players and just kind of moving around. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's what I'm excited about most. And then like, yeah, of course, like the games, like that's going to be fun. Um, I feel like it's going to be kind of this, like, um, kind of like homecoming is like the right word, but like, I just feel like every, every so often I'll hear from like somebody that's in the kind of like the, the creative space of soccer. And they're just like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be there too. Or like, you know, a friend that's going to be photographing it. So I think on that, um, on that tip too, it's going to be fun to see some people who are on the creative side over there as well as like, you know, what we're doing with like dream and, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a really good time. And it's like also the first one too. So that's going to be incredible to be a part of. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm, I'm so excited, honestly, I can't wait. And then the guys from the West coast are flying in um, this weekend at time of recording and we'll get the whole squad together, have a couple of training sessions and then we'll be, we'll be on our way. I'm excited. Um, actually, I do have one more question before I, before we get to what's next. Is there a photographer like, Photographers, like you hear goalkeeper union, like is there a photographers union? If you got like 
three, four people shooting the same game that you know who they are? Like, how does that? Because I, I sometimes I see photographers take pictures of other photographers and say like, oh, so and so is like at work or whatever. Do you guys collaborate that much, or is it more of an individual like, like you know people obviously, but I, is there a collaborative environment for you guys, or is it kind of just a you get your shots, you get your shots, and if we're friends, we're friends, and otherwise, you know what uh, I mean. I think I I always try to be like collegial, like I always yeah, try yeah. To like if we're if it's a scenario where like we're in locked positions like if we're you know sitting behind um you know the basket at a basketball game or behind the goal um at a match like you know you're in close quarters with like somebody so like yeah like you know just be cool be friendly like um i remember um when i was like first starting out there was like a photographer from like another newspaper. Um, he ran out of batteries. Like his battery was like mm -hmm. dead. Like mm -hmm. for some reason, it was just like a a, a thing where um just nothing was like working. Yeah. And, um, a photographer from like another newspaper handed him a battery and was like, here you go. Like you know, finish the shoot, give it back to me, like, whenever, and that always, like, kind of stuck with me, like, you know, like, yeah, we're maybe working for competing, you know, news organizations, but also at the same time, like, you know, help the person next to you, like, yeah, be, for sure, be, be a human first, like, so if you've got, like, you know, if you're using Canon or if you're using Nikon and like you've got like an extra battery and someone's like batteries like on the fritz, like help them out. Like yeah. it's it'll it'll come back around. Like it could easily be, you know, me in that situation where like my gear is failing and like uh yeah, so I try to be collegial and like you know, you can make friends with people, like photography photo land is like pretty small and like I don't know. It's always like good to just like, um, yeah, just be like a good person, and then like, hundred yeah. percent. The reason I ask is because sometimes in movies or TV shows, you like you'll see a scene where a photographer photographer at a newspaper will like go into the editor's office or whatever, and they'll be like, "You need to get the shot," and like we can't have the other people get the shot. And I was like, I wonder how true or not true that that is. Um, but what you said makes sense, and that I mean. I would hope it would be that way. There's too much, too much negativity, anyways, in in the world, and don't don't need more of it. Um, so what's next for you, and for you personally, and you with with Dream? What like next two, three, four, five years? Like, what are you looking at for both you as just you, and then also you with Dream? Oh, I thought you meant like kind of immediate, like what's next? Um, immediately, like what's next is like we are. So Lucas and I are going to go do a shoot for that, like the, uh, the travel gear, the sideline mm -hmm. gear, um, like basically like right after, right after we wrap this up. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. Um, like what's next or like, what's next or like, what do I, want? or like, what do you, like, what do you envision if you had to say, Oh, in three years, if everything goes right, uh, I'll be doing blank or my relationship with dream will be blank and dream will be doing X. Like what are you envisioning? Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, so it's like from a photography standpoint, um, at some point, so I, I have all these like images from like Hawaii that I've like made. Cause like I, my mom's from there. Um, I grew up spending a lot of time there. And so I, I feel like I have a really unique relationship with like the Island and I don't feel like I'm an outsider, but at the same time I open my mouth, like it's clear that I'm not from Hawaii. So I want to make like some type of like book that really speaks to like, um, you know, my experience. Um, so I think like from, yeah, non, non assignment work, like that's, something that I want to work towards. And then, um, for dream, uh, 
gosh, there's like so many directions. From um, a con- from like go from like a content perspective for you. Like, what would you like to see Dream like your role with Dream be in terms of? Um, I don't even know. Like, go from a strictly go from a more strictly content perspective because there's all there's loads of stuff like on the field that we can that we can do that Lucas and I touched on in in the other episode. And I don't want to pigeonhole you or put you in a position where you're like, well, I hope that they're playing better. It's like, oh yeah, right, well, like, yeah, yeah. I really need you guys to like <laughs> three five two. Like, you know, let's yeah. we're we're talking tactics now. No, I am do not talk tactics with me. I am Lucas will share tactics with me, and I'm just like. This is cool. Um, I'm glad you're sharing this with me. Like, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, it's always nice to be included, but like, I don't need to like. I don't As feel <laughs> like respond because like, yeah. yeah, it's not like I have like a loose like understanding, but like I'm not somebody who's gonna be like, oh yeah, let's move like. You know, what if we had a front screen position and like we have Sam doing like no, like don't ask me. Yeah, for yeah. that. Um, but from a content side, um, I would like to move more into, um, collaborating with like younger photographers. Um, I want to find, um, somebody that we can work with as like a dedicated videographer. Um, we haven't done anything with like motion, um, quite yet, um, to the level that we have with like still photography. And I know that like, um, that's a goal that like Lucas and I have. So I I want to be more in a role of like finding, finding talent, nurturing talent, and then putting this talent into um, a situation where like they can make really strong work and like it continues um, to raise awareness for the club and like, do it in the way that we've been doing it where like it's a it's just like a different take on like what a soccer what photographing a soccer club could look like um and then you know also like lucas and you know for the for the kit launches like lucas and i were like essentially producing like shoots and i think he and i worked really well together so i off i also see some type of like creative agency that could be either part of the club or adjacent to the club where it's he and I are just kind of like cooking up creative projects for, for other brands, other organizations. Mm. And then having that be like another way um, the club can be supported, um, you know, through, through doing like creative like work. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. I think, yeah, I think something could, there's definitely something there. I mean, you go to another up and coming club and you're like, Hey, we got our stuff on soccer Bible in a month. I'm like, oh, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> like hired. Um, Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Okay. So where can the people find you on social if they want to see your stuff? Where can they go? Um, Probably like Instagram. Instagram is probably the best way to find me um just instagram.com forward slash uh jared sorries j-a-r-e-d-s-o-a-r-e-s and then um yeah you can just like put my name in google too and then like work will come up (laughs) yeah fair enough i appreciate your time man and i'll for those listening that that will be in the description below and stuff um but yeah i appreciate your time this was great i know you got to get out of here Tell uh, t- tell Lucas I said hi. <laughs> oh, you know, I'll be sure to do that. <laughs> Even though I talked with him yesterday. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, any last nickels before we get out of here? Um, I think something that like I've really, you know, enjoyed about being part of like Virginia Dream is that it it seems my experience has been like if you have a good idea or if you just have any idea and you're down to collaborate, like something good will happen. And like, I've never been pushed more creatively, like working, you know, working with this club and like working with Lucas. I think that's the other reason, like why I'm so enthusiastic and energetic about like 
um being so present like at um at training at like anything related to the club because like it just seems like there's an opportunity to create something and building something that's like bigger than me bigger than you bigger um you know then yeah just something bigger and like also it seems like it's this um opportunity to kind of move like american soccer culture into into something that's like cooler like yeah. i don't think american soccer culture is nobody's ever attached the word cool to it and i feel like what virginia dream doing is doing is like it's interesting it's dynamic it's there's something fresh about it and i feel like if the club can inspire you know other other groups to do something similar or do it their own way like i would like to see you know like the new mexico version of like virginia dream or like I I hope that like there is some sort of inspiration where like you can do it yourself and like you can team up with like people to build this thing that's like bigger bigger than like the game itself. Yeah, 100%. That was I talked with uh Brandon earlier and that was one of the things that he mentioned to be able to be a part of building something that's bigger than us and I think people when they're building something like, oh, we could really make an impact on this, this, and this. And kind of in the back of your head, you're always like, yeah, but like not really. But for this one, it feels it feels different. Um, and I think it's it's a really cool, cool thing to be a part of. And I'm I'm glad you're here, man. The the shots are great and and the relationships I'm sure you're building have have proved fruitful and and hopefully we'll both uh, we'll both be around for, for a little while. <laughs> I th- I think I think it's going somewhere. I think it's going somewhere for sure. Yeah, man. Um, and I, yeah, I'll probably see you s- tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> my day is like all mixed uh, up. It's Sunday, but good. like no, there's a there's a match. There's a match yeah. tomorrow. Tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, two probably every day for the next week and a half. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.